Hi everybody, Mark here, and this is a special video to help with listening skills. Uh, of course, building your listening skills is going to help other skills as well, including speaking pronunciation, but this can even help you with your uh, writing. So uh, hopefully you'll find this useful. Um, many people have used the website TED.com. Uh, to help them teach English. Now this is a great idea, uh, but you have to be very careful in how you do this. TED Talks and the questions that sometimes teachers will make don't always prepare students um, to improve their listening. It doesn't always help them with exam preparation. But I've got a technique here which can help you uh, use TED Talks to really improve your listening um, but it's also going to help improve all areas, including grammar, vocabulary, speaking, and writing. All right, so this is TED.com, all right, and you're using it to improve listening. So that's technology, education, and design. You've seen these videos many times. Uh, you know, they talk about science, space travel, and food. It's all very interesting. Now, if you're planning to do the IELTS exam soon, this can also help. Uh, it's going to help you, you know, give you a new technique to build your listening skills so you can get that 7 or 8 that you're trying to get. Now, of course, that takes time. So hopefully, what you learn today, you can start to apply uh, very soon. Now, the big problem with TED Talks is, I'll, you know, I used to see students watch these videos and after about one or two minutes they get lost. Now the reason is they'll hear vocabulary they can't follow. Uh, they don't know what the person is talking about because of vocabulary problems or he's, he or she is talking too fast in this video. Uh, now what I do and what helps a lot of students uh, that I teach is that I get them to not listen for every single word, not, uh, and of course not just the main idea or details. I want you to listen for something more specific. Okay? You want to listen to the problem solution. Usually whoever's talking is addressing a problem. It could be problems of space travel. It could be problems with computer addiction. It could be problems with drug addiction. And they'll talk about the cause of this problem, uh, you know, why there is computer addiction, why we are having difficulty going into space. They'll talk about the effects as well. And of course, they'll usually talk about solutions. Now, you don't have to understand every single word to get all of this information. And the fun thing is, if you get lost while you're watching the talk, you can try to find your way again because eventually the speaker will go to a new point. He'll go to a new cause of the problem or he'll talk about another effect. This helps you get as much information as you can and that way you can listen to a 10, 15, or 20 minute TED talk without, without getting lost or without getting frustrated. Uh, so please remember, this will help you improve your overall listening skills because of course, the more you listen, the more improved your listening will be. Also, this will help you. TED Talks are great. They're going to help you build background knowledge. So if you're doing your speaking or writing exam and the question is, you know, why is obesity such a big problem today and what can we do? It'll be easier for you to answer. If the question is about climate change or global warming, you'll have more background knowledge if you watch more of these TED Talks. All right, so it can help you build the vocabulary and just, not just vocabulary, but the ideas you need. So remember, vocabulary comes from your ideas. If you don't have the ideas, you won't have the vocabulary. The beautiful thing about a TED Talk is you're getting the ideas and the vocabulary that you can use in speaking and writing. And of course, you're listening for a longer time and you're getting more listening practice. This can help you make listening a part of your everyday.
everyday life. So let's take a moment and take a look at one of my favorite TED Talks. All right, this is one I always show classes uh, that I teach. Uh, this is from Jamie Oliver, the famous, famous chef. He's from London, and he's going to talk about a problem. I'm going to play the first two minutes, okay? All I want you to do is identify the problem that he talks about. Sadly, in the next 18 minutes when I do our chat, four Americans that are alive will be dead through the food that they eat. My name's Jamie Oliver. I'm 34 years old. I'm from Essex in England. And uh, for the last seven years, I've worked fairly tirelessly to uh, save lives in my own way. I'm not a doctor. I'm a chef. I don't have expensive equipment or medicine. I use information, education. I profoundly believe that the power of food has a primal place in our homes that binds us to the best bits of life. We have an awful, awful reality right now. America you're at the top of your game. This is one of the most unhealthy countries in the world. Can I please just see a raise of hands for how many of you had, have children in this room today? Please put your hands up. Aunties, uncles, you can continue. Put your hands up. Aunties and uncles as well? Most of you. Okay. We, the adults of the last four generations, have blessed our children with the destiny of a shorter lifespan than their own parents. Your child will live a life 10 years younger than you because of the landscape of food that we've built around them. Two-thirds of this room today in America are statistically overweight or obese. You lot, you're all right, but we'll get you eventually, don't worry. Right? The statistics of bad health are clear, very clear. We spend our lives being paranoid about death, murder, homicide, you name it. It's on the front page of every paper, CNN. Look at homicide at the bottom, for God's sake. Right? Every single one of those ones in the red is a diet-related disease. Any doctor, any specialist will tell you that. It's fact. Diet-related disease is the biggest killer in the United States right now, here today. This is a global problem. It's a catastrophe. It's sweet. All right, so I'm going to stop it there. That's enough. Okay, now hopefully you could hear all that, and uh, you heard a few things. Uh, you heard him talking about death in the United States. You heard him talk about food in the United States. And so, as you've probably figured out, the main problem he is talking about is obesity. Now, if you didn't get obesity, let's say you heard diet-related disease, or you said food-killing people, or shorter lifespan. That's fine. You've still identified the problem, okay? You also probably saw that he was talking about how people die. Okay, so the problem is obesity, and what's the effect of obesity? Well, you have heart attacks or heart disease. You saw him show that. Uh, diabetes was there. Cancer. These are some of the effects. He also said a shorter lifespan than parents. So children will live shorter. Okay, so what I want you to do is just get out a piece of paper. You can pause the video, get a piece of paper, I want you to watch the whole video. Watch the full 20-minute video. It's a great video. All you need to do is make a copy of this page. Okay, so problem, you know, in the middle, write problem, cause, effect on either side. Then leave some space, and you can write solution. Perhaps that should be solutions. Okay, you can leave a little space and maybe talk about effects again. All right, so cause, problem, effects, and down below, solutions. Okay, so I've put a link 
uh, to the full video, you can watch it either on YouTube or on TED.com. All right, it's about 20 minutes. Relax, enjoy, just make a few notes, and I will see you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you watched the whole video. Quite shocking, I'm sure you felt. Uh, now, let's take a look at what your notes might look like. All right. So this is actually based on one of my students' notes. I didn't want to show her notes, but uh, I've got, I made my own copy of her notes. And here's what it might look like. So yes, nothing changes here. Obesity is still the main problem that they talk about. But let's get to the causes, okay? What causes obesity? What causes this big problem? You might have heard him talk about fast food and the big companies. Of course, that would be uh, fast food restaurants. That's going to be uh, the McDonald's's, the Burger King's. He didn't say them, but that's what he's clearly saying. He also talked about food being processed. It's highly processed. Uh, maybe you saw that he said labeling. If you didn't get all these, that's fine, but you maybe got a few of them. Some of them later would have come up. This all depends on your vocabulary as well. All right? Sp labeling, that's, well, it's a higher level piece of vocabulary, but you should have gotten fast food. Processed food, of course, any kind of food that is made, any kind of bread or chocolate or candy. Uh, you know, you mentioned that the food says low fat, but it has so much sugar. Not enough vegetables or <laughs> potatoes are a veg French fries are a vegetable. He also talked about how children are not taught to cook anymore. That was a big problem. And, uh, of course, I'm sure all of you noticed he talked about the sugar in children's milk. That was a big problem, and he showed all of the sugar in that video. The effect. Well, right in the beginning, he talked about diet-related disease. Heart attack, diabetes, cancer. All right? Death. He mentioned a shorter lifespan than parents, so children will die earlier. Also, uh, you know, he showed a picture of the young woman who is 16 years old and has six years to live. Again, you don't have to get the exact words, but you see the idea. Young people dying early. Families. Families are ruined. Now, he doesn't say ruined specifically, but he says their parents died. The young girl's father died. Her uncle died. So it's ruining families. It's damaging the families. Okay. He did talk about solutions. His main idea, he was there to start a food revolution. Uh, what was his solution? Teaching about food in school. You saw him with those children, teaching them about uh, the different types of vegetable. All right, so that was one solution, teach kids. He also said, teach kids how to cook three meals. Then they cook three meals, and they teach their friends, and then they teach their friends, and it goes on and on and on. Free cooking lessons. At the end, he talked about the institutes uh, in England where they teach cooking. Yes, very important. Uh, and of course, at the end, he said, well, you know, if you do these things, if you have all of this, uh, you know, good, good action, you know, you'll be clever. He says, you do well in school if you eat properly. Uh, and of course, you're going to live longer. So remember, it's not just listening for the words and listening for details. It's I deciding what kind of details you want to look for. This is a very common structure in TED Talks. There's a problem. They talk about why it's a problem, the causes. What happens because of the problem? That's the effects. And of course, how do we solve the problem? So remember, all of this vocabulary that you're going to get, right, when you are doing your speaking test or writing test, you're going to, you know, by using these words, right, a shorter lifespan, um, you know, additives or processed food, um, these other ones like, you know, you're clever in school. 
this is what's going to help you get that vocabulary to get the higher score. Just remember, vocabulary comes from the ideas. If you get a question about why children don't eat healthy food, well, again, you're not going to have the vocabulary if you can't quickly think of an answer. So remember, the more you read, the more you listen, uh, you know, the, the f easier it is to answer those questions. And of course, the more you practice your listening and the more you look for these relationships, the more you're going to be listening to English. And that's just going to help, that, that's going to help you a lot. It's going to help with your speaking, your pronunciation, and all those other things. So I'll put a few links, um, especially to this video, but to a few others that you can watch. Um, and, you know, just watch over them, make those notes, identify them. And then you'll find it's a little bit easier when you're doing the listening test to pick up the ideas. Now, uh, I will also put up a video for how you can use this to improve your uh, pronunciation. We'll talk about that specifically in another video. But just remember the key points here, listen for the cause effect and problem solution relationships. Do not worry about unknown vocabulary or getting lost. If you get lost, just jump back in when you hear a cause or effect or a problem and a solution. Focus on the idea. And also, look to gain knowledge from these videos. You're not just trying to practice listening, you're building your knowledge. This is going to help you with every single part of the test, not just reading, uh, sorry, not just writing and speaking, but also even the reading and listening. If they're on a similar topic, the more you know about the topic, the more success you can have. Anyway, I hope that helps a little bit. Feel free to share the video. Uh, there'll be another video on how to do uh, how to use TED to improve your pronunciation. And once again, you will see our good friend, Jamie Oliver. Uh, good night and good luck.